Alright, check, check. What is up, you guys? Let us know if you can hear us. We are back today for another Friday Tech Support Live show. Uh, if this is your first time here, um, just, introduce, uh, just introduce myself. Uh, I'm Angelo. I'll be your host for today. I'm the Senior Interactive Media Specialist here at Netgear, so uh, I manage the, this YouTube channel. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. I manage this YouTube channel. Um, I manage pretty much any kind of live stream activities that we do across the entire Netgear brand. Um, and I'm also, be, uh, if you haven't checked it out, we have Mural, which is a product line that I'm essentially um, uh, brand managing. So uh, pretty much in any case, uh, happy to see everybody here again. Shout out to our regulars. Um, we're going to go ahead and kind of dive into the chat in just a quick second. But uh, Darren, you are next. I'm Darren. I'm a technical support specialist and community moderator at Gear. I cover all, almost all of our home networking products on across the community and some social media. Uh, hopefully, we have a lot of questions today. And on to Michael. Hey everyone, I'm Michael, a technical marketing manager. Um, I do a lot of beta testing for um, all of our products that um, come out and. Um, when there's trade shows, do a lot of face-to-face -face, um, training and um, explaining our products to people. And I'm looking forward to answering any questions you got. All right. Awesome. And then remember, guys, this is a show that we do every week uh, from 12 o'clock Pacific time to 1 p.m. Pacific time. And we'll be going from the top of the chat all the way to the, uh, to the bottom, all the way until up to the end of the hour. So any questions you guys have... We'll be happy to help you guys out through the next hour. And anything we can't get to at the end, um, we have our tech, uh, tech support live show uh, for, for next Friday as well. Um, but I'll go ahead and kind of kind of start from the top here. So uh, unfortunately, today we are missing Ben. He is our Nighthawk Pro Gamer, um, essentially uh, the brand manager for Nighthawk Pro Gaming. So um, he'll, he, hopefully he should be back for, for, for next week, but, um, again, we'll be able to, uh, help out any kind of MPG related questions as best we can here on the show. Uh, Ryan Fries, welcome back. Uh, you, I love to see your name popping into every single video that I upload. So we really appreciate the support and you coming back here every single week. We'd love to see it. What's up, Kev? What's up, Hamad? Uh, Ricky B, what is going on? Uh, Dan Tuma. Dan Tuma says one year plus now. And Corona isn't done yet. And that's crazy. I don't even, yeah, we are pretty much like past that one year anniversary um, to the show. So again, thank yep. you guys for coming back for literally over a year, literally pretty much every single week. Like that's something that time and time again, you know, I love to tell, I love to talk up to you guys to like everybody who knows that we're running the show on how much you guys keep on supporting the show giving us those likes, subscribing to us, um, engaging in the chat every single week, uh, not joining just Tech Support Live, but also our other live events that uh, we've done in the past. So again, we really appreciate the support and it's really crazy that it has been over one year, so. Yeah, it's hard to believe we've actually been doing this for an entire year. Yeah. Hey, and again, imagine one year ago, uh, my God, like nine day difference in terms of the uh, how this show was kind of created, just a little bit of the background. It came because of you guys. It came because um, we knew that there was a need to answer essentially tech support related questions just from the influx of people who were starting to upgrade their networks, starting to buy uh, new products, kind of working from home for the first time or doing remote learning for the first time. And then um, it really kind of just blew up and kind of became its own thing. And here we are one year later. So again, I really appreciate that. Um, Husky Gamer, what is up? Um, I don't know if I remember your name. Hopefully, maybe uh, <coughs> Alec was hosting the show with uh, you in here, but welcome, and hope you enjoy it. Awesome. And Karen as well. Cool, cool. So, I do see Ricky B. I want to make sure that um, uh, you're essentially, I know we've been kind of running into this ongoing kind of uh, conversation with the R6700. I know I think we might have kind of touched... I guess like uh, like last week, I, th I think Alec might have helped you out a little bit as well, but uh, I want to make sure that you're all set. You know, we don't want anybody here to run into essentially any kind of difficult issues, and that's kind of why we opened up this forum. Um, so unfortunately, if the, the product that we sent to you unfortunately didn't work out, uh, I want to see what we could do here with the team that we do have. We have Christine, 
um, who is uh, our gal in the sky. Hopefully we'll have her on the show one day. Um, but please let us know kind of how else we can help you out here and if there's anything um, that we can kind of essentially steer you into any direction if you want to stick with the Nightmare family. All right. Um, okay. I do want to kind of uh, bring up Arsenal's initial question here as well. Uh, and again, we're going to kind of keep going down here and then uh, we'll address everybody's questions throughout the show. But just starting from the top here, um, so I can float this up to the team. Uh, Alright, Nega Gang, I have owned the X1000 for the last four months. I've used it wired with the PS5 and have gigabit internet with Verizon Fios. Uh, what is the future in regards to QoS? Are we staying with FQ underscore total? Uh, and continuing my message, is there any plan to enhance the experience as far as advanced QoS options, like QoS algorithms? Um, I know it's a little bit more than the Duma side, but hopefully we might have a little bit of insight to that. Um, yeah, this is a question that I really wish Ben was here for. <laughs> but uh, I'm wondering, Darian and Michael, if uh, there's any insight that you guys could add, or if you guys have seen anything in the community about like any kind of chatter in terms of Duma's updates, or even kind of just general suggestions, because we love hearing from you guys on how we could improve the software and the hardware. Yeah, as far as um, adding additional um, algorithms for the, um, the QoS, um, at this point, I haven't seen anything in conversations one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, as far as NetDuma, usually the NetDuma side is um, those guys are the ones that um, work with that sort of stuff within the NetDuma you know, framework. But from our side, haven't seen anything. Um, doesn't mean we won't have something, but at this point, it's not on anyone's radar. Yeah, and especially on uh, the NetDoom side uh, in particular, um, I know that they do have their own uh, community forums, and then that's kind of where we were steering a lot of the, uh, a lot of your guys' suggestions that you guys were coming out to us for for these shows. We've done a couple of Doom OS live shows, um, I believe, in the in the past summer. Uh, but in any case, if you have any like specific suggestions. I think the ones that you're calling out for different QoS algorithms. Um, just to give you guys insight, our team is relatively small. So any of these suggestions, we could float up directly to the folks and the teams who created Duma OS and the, uh, the hardware that um, powers that software. So in any case, hit us up with your suggestions. And then that's something that we could pass on to the team. So, Arsenal, if you're still here in the chat, we'd love to hear it. All right. I also want to make sure I do get back. All right. But uh, let me see here. Husky Gamer, I want to make sure that I got your question here. Uh, is there any ideas of what naked product I should get? Because we have Viasat, and I hate it, and I have about 842 ping. 842 ping. Yeah. <laughs> but that's uh, crazy. Viasat, yeah, Viasat satellite um, connection. And yeah, the ping rates on those things can be really bad. Mm -hmm. um, the um, initiative that Elon Musk is putting out with his um, Starlink, um, from what I've seen of some of the um, beta testers, they're getting you know 50 to 75 ping on that right now. Um, so um, if that's available in your area or becomes available in your area, that's probably your best solution if you don't have access to um, any standard um, uh, cable companies or um, internet providers. Mm -hmm. You could also go um, with a cellular um, solution like our LM1200, um, which is 5G, which will support 5G, depending on what you have in your area as well. But when you go with that solution, it's a lot harder to find an unlimited plan. So you really have to be careful about the plans you get on how much data you're going to be um, using. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to suggest the same thing with Starlink, but the test results coming out of that are just amazing for a satellite internet. I, my parents had satellite internet like six, seven years ago, and it was just terrible. <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine has... Um, one of the more popular satellite um, internet because where he lives up in um, the Livermore area, but he's far enough out of town that there is no other coverage. And he has nothing but bad things to say about satellite on the ping rates and his throughput um, from the satellite is really low. Oh so God. he's actually on the um, 
the um, beta list he's put down his money for Starlink and hopefully he'll get it sometime in the near future so I can find out how well it does in real world um, use. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so just to drill it down again, um, I, I remember the second suggestion on we do have cellular products and then I could kind of uh, kind of brush that up on the um, I guess a little bit more into detail. But the first suggestion I remember uh, you mentioned on satellite. Um, was there another suggestion there? Just to kind of drill that one down. Not really. When you're talking about satellite itself, um, if you don't have access to any of the other ways to get um, internet except satellite, then mm -hmm. you're stuck with whatever satellite providers um, cover your area. Okay. And I haven't heard any good stories from um, using satellite providers, no matter who the provider is, mm -hmm. because the ping rates on those satellites are incredibly slow, and usually your throughputs are really low as well. The packages they offer are nothing like what you're going to get with um, wired connections through like Comcast or um, AT&T or some of the others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got either sticking with satellite or kind of what we mentioned, we do have a uh, few mobile solutions. And um, I'm kind of curious to see if this is something kind of feasible here, um, Husky Gamer. <laughs> so uh, kind of what, what Michael um, kind of brought up, we have the LM1200, which is the 4G LTE modem. This is essentially, so this one would actually just be the modem itself. This one isn't like a traditional kind of hotspot. Or is it a hotspot? Well, technically it is a hotspot, but it's specifically designed as a um, cellular modem. Gotcha. So it acts the same way a normal hotspot would be where you can um, connect wirelessly um, to it. Actually, no, with this, it doesn't have the wireless. It only has the wire. Mm -hmm. So you would need to actually wire um, a router in to its um, Ethernet port. In gotcha. fact, if you give me a second, I'll grab it and show it to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's I mean, check it out. He could also go with the Orbi LTE if he needs a whole router system that has the LTE modem built into it if he's going to go that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then this is something, uh, Husky Gamer, this is something that we are um, All right. We're pretty much focused on. Actually, let me, let me, Michael, you're back. Yep. I'm back. And All there right. it is. There's the LTE 1200. Yep. Wow. And you can see on the back end here. You've got a wired Ethernet port, and you also have um, your um, SIM card port that you get from your um, cellular provider, mm -hmm. and then standard USB-C um, power. And yeah, this is basically um, acts as your um, modem, and you can wire directly into it with a laptop, or you can hook a router into this and then use um, that for your um, Wi-Fi. In fact, when the power went out up here, um, and because the power went out and I've got Comcast and their cell towers are on battery backup that don't last very long. I then went to this and I just plugged my home network directly into this. Mm -hmm. And wow. that way we were able to at least still have some internet um, going since we're working from home. Could that product work as like a fail safe? Like let's say if the satellite goes down for whatever reason, you could- Not, not yet. Okay. Um, because this is specifically only cellular um, connection right now. Mm -hmm. But in the future, they're going to be upgrading the firmware. So the other port here, which is covered, would be the um, one that would come from your standard wired um, internet provider, gotcha. like Comcast. Oh. And so then when Comcast um, goes down, then it could fail over to the cellular. Mm -hmm. Right now, though, it's just purely cellular. But in the future, we will have that option. The port's already there. Michael, doesn't the Orbi have the failover built into it? Uh, the Orbi does, yes. Yes. If you want to go that, if you want to go that way. Yeah. And yeah, let's 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 talk about this one a little bit, just so everybody here on the show can kind of understand what we're talking about here. So um, we're doing something where we call it uh, fixed wireless, essentially. So it's a wireless solution, as in it's powered by 4G LTE, but it's fixed, as in it's a router that you don't like. Unlike a mobile hotspot, it's not necessarily something that's mobile. It's technically fixed, but this essentially kind of gives you best of both worlds when it comes to um, especially folks that live somewhere rural or maybe someone that doesn't have a, a pretty, um, I guess, reliable internet connection. Um, this can, or we have, okay, we have the LM1200, which Michael, you uh, you just mentioned here, but there's two, um, there's two products here that I, Husky Gamer, I would actually kind of um, encourage you to check out. Let's say for the LBR20, works very similar to Orbi in the way that you could add on multiple satellites, create a mesh network, but the difference is that the, the modem is built in and it's cellular. So you could essentially put a, uh, a SIM card in the back. I forgot if it's a micro SIM or a yep. SIM card, but um, pretty much put the SIM in the back and it's gonna just automatically start powering your Wi-Fi through 
that SIM card, and you'll be powered through LTE. Um, the LEX20, the Nighthawk route, still very similar, but that one would be more of just that uh, one router solution. Um, not necessarily mesh, but just kind of depends on what's within your budget and um, kind of um, the range that you're looking at. Mesh is a little bit better for uh, larger coverage, um, but Nighthawk will do well, and that one's also Wi-Fi 6, so you get uh, 4G and Wi-Fi 6 kind of packed in the same box. Um, either way, that's kind of, you know, this is something that we live and breathe every single day, but I want to kind of just like float that out to everybody here just because hopefully some people find some value in exactly um, kind of learning about all these different technologies because these things are technically emerging um, and we just kind of want to bring it a little bit more to light. But Husky Gamer, hopefully we we're able to um, answer your question a little bit. All right. And Ricky B, I did want to um, address your, your next concern. Um, please, please, please. Um, Christine, she dropped the email. I know um, this is something that we've been working through in the past, um, but it's very, very, very rare for especially us to to send essentially send out one, not one, but like two products out to you. And then they were both kind of having the same kind of issue. We want to make sure that it just doesn't go dark and just doesn't end like that. So again, you, you have us as a resource, um, hopefully, you're able to reach out to Christine, and hopefully we could um, have at least a couple updates from you next time on the next show. But hopefully we're able to um, give you a little bit more help. All right. And then, Arsenal, you are still in the chat, and I see that you uh, put a little bit of a follow-up. So uh, same yeah, same kind of same kind of question for, for uh, Advanced QoS. Um, there's a follow-up here. Wanted to ask you a question regarding the apply to WAN option in QoS. Now, Duma has said that it provides QoS informational tags to your ISP on those packets. How can I check to see if Verizon accepts that? Oh, that's an interesting question. Is there a way, you know, through the actual provider itself to see um, these packets coming through the router? I don't even know if they want to play, play nice. <laughs> like, do you think they would do that? That's probably something that they're not even, you know, going to spend any time on. Yeah. Um, and so contacting your um, your ISP and trying to find out um, what they do with those um, tags, there anyone you talk to is not going to give you any information on it. Oh. Because that that's digging a little bit too deep for what they care about. As long as your service is working, that's as much as they care. Yeah, and anyone you talk to isn't even going to have access to what you're looking for. They're just a yep. frontline rep that's just going to be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's typically kind of like, you know, because I moved in recently, it's usually, hey, did were you able to set it up? Oh, we weren't able to set it up. All right, we'll send a person over. So you can try it out. I mean, let us know kind of what they kind of kind of say, but... Yeah, to, to our knowledge, usually the folks on the front line are the ones that are kind of just able to kind of get up the service running. Uh, but hey, I don't think it's ever not worth a shot. So I would. <laughs> you might be able to get something, but probably not. That's kind of where we're ending that up at. All right. Oh, and also the question on um, if we're not uh, having um, advanced QoS options, the XR1000 from Arsenal, um, why um, choose that besides having Wi-Fi 6? Well, QoS uh, models are not something that most of the end users worry about that much. Yes, you can tweak with them to make um, your connections better, faster, that sort of thing, but most of those are tiny incremental changes, which for 90% of the users, they don't even think about. Um, but with Wi-Fi 6, they do think about that because that's something that can directly affect them that they can actually see which is if they have Wi-Fi 6 devices, the um, devices um, can be faster and also use far less power if you're talking about a Wi-Fi 6 phone um, when it's connected up to the um, router so your battery life lasts longer. So there's a lot of pluses for on um, the Wi-Fi 6 even if we're not changing the QoS. And it doesn't mean that we won't in the future, but QoS uh, models is not something that most users really are going to dig into and care that much about as long as their routers you know giving them fast speeds they're happy mm -hmm. and yeah to kind of like tell the story of kind of how the extra 1000 and kind of just like how not for gaming versus kind of let's say um let's say if you really want advanced quality service functionality um i think our work from home smb solutions are kind of something to consider but then make your insight right so fundamentally here's kind of the story and kind of how we differentiate the two um, Night Hyper Gaming was pretty much created to pretty much compartmentalize all those features that gamers wanted. 
um, kind of coming from our CEO Luke, right? Uh, or from from the Duma. Um, the story goes is that they had slow internet in the dorm room. They're trying to play Halo or Counter Strike, and essentially trying to kind of fiddle and tinker, especially with like dorm room internet in college. It's it's complicated. It's it takes a lot of layers. It takes a lot of technical kind of expertise, relatively. Um, compared to kind of like your average kind of layperson trying to set up, let's say, Norby, for example. Um, essentially, they're taking a lot of this complicated information and then putting it together into a package that essentially a lot of other folks could understand, right? You know, hopefully with the QoS, you could very quickly kind of get it in terms of, I, I think we kind of call it the flower, at least I do, um, simple drag and drop kind of, kind of functionality. Uh, versus, let's say, uh, our work from home kind of SMB solutions, kind of like uh, the new access points we're coming out on the, the Necker business line. Even though it's business in the name, in terms of um, it is traditionally oriented to small and medium sized businesses, we're seeing a huge increase in uh, the number of folks that are using it for kind of more of a prosumer kind of line. Um, the folks that do want to tinker and set those kind of advanced functionalities. So the solutions are out there. It just kind of really depends on what you're currently on and what you're currently looking to do in terms of tinkering, um, setting these kind of functionalities and features to essentially make your life better or make your network better, right? So that's just kind of like the background of kind of um, the different product lines we have to offer. But always we appreciate that feedback. So <laughs> please let us know if you did find that helpful. All right. Did want to go up a little bit, and again, let me let me know if I did skip a question here. Um, but Razor twenty forty eight, welcome to the show. Uh, for the standard RAX series of routers from Netgear, are there any plans to allow users, ooh, QoS, to supplement the QoS database with community created L seven filters? Wow, <laughs> we're talking about QoS a lot in the show. Um, the answer to the answer to that is. Most likely not. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to um, our routers with their stock firmware um, and the stock packages that go into that, that's pretty much you know um, locked. They don't allow um, third-party filters or um, additional packages to be added. Um, we did have um, a lot of routers that would allow for open-source um, community um, firmware to go in there, and then you get a lot of different kind of functionality um, from those and they replace the firmware that we currently have on there. But as far as our current firmwares um, and having um, the community to be able to modify it at all, the answer would be no. Netgear has never done that in the past, so I would not expect that in the um, future. The best thing that could happen is have the Rack series start to allow for open source um, firmware, and then you would get a lot more functionality like that. Mm -hmm. And then that was something in the past. I don't. I don't want to dwell too much on it, but I believe the R seven thousand. That was kind of like our tinkerers, I guess. Well, we um, actually had. There was actually quite a few others as well. And I used to work directly with a couple of the um, um, programmers that were creating packages for our um, products. Uh -huh. um, there was one um, person that was over in the um, UK, and I think another one that was over in Germany, and they were. You know, we'd send them our firmware package, they'd go in, they would do all their modifications that um, they needed to, and then um, you'd have your open source firmware. We, I haven't been part of that program in a while, and I haven't seen anything go by my desk in a long time to see whether or not we're still doing that. Mm -hmm. I know on the Racks um, series, definitely we haven't done it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we did it on the R8. There was um, ones for the R8000, R7000. I think the R6250 there was um, open source firmware on. So we were doing that for a while. I think we've moved away from it. It would be nice if we could do it again in the future because the open source um, firmware definitely gave a lot of additional functionality. Um, it would lose a couple of features because we have some proprietary tweaks that we do to our firmware that can't go out in the package that we send to be tweaked. Mm -hmm. All we can send out is what is already um, part of the open source. And then they could make their changes um, to that. But it would be nice to allow a little bit more flexibility for users. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And everybody here who is watching the show, if you guys do find that kind of helpful, you know, again, you know, these are these are suggestions that we'll be able to kind of raise to the team. Even though if we don't have it on the roadmap, roadmap now, this is still something that we could be floating up. And again, I think this is also um, a good opportunity. We have our uh, idea exchange, and oops, let me let me let me. Kind of Float this up here, but in any case, um, being able to provide 
Uh, these forms. Let me let me let me kind of load this up. Oh, I'm at completed ideas. All right. Let's say for example here. I think we have like one thread going. But for example, this is this is idea exchange for business, but it kind of gets the point across here. Uh, we do have uh, the forms here where we're able to essentially um, get you guys to put in your suggestions, and if they do get enough upvotes, uh, they will go directly to the team who essentially creates your products. And um, you know, we do have these uh, venues for you guys to put in your ideas, whether it's in the YouTube chat here, which is something we report on every single week, or the uh, idea exchange forum on the Netflix community. So lots of opportunities for you guys to let yourself be heard. Um, and you know, it's kind of, um, I want to make sure that everyone's aware of kind of where you can put these ideas because you never know will they, uh, where they'll end up and you might see them integrated in the near future. All right. Cool, cool. So I do want to uh, kind of go uh, back to Husky Gamer. I know we were um, talking a little bit about the uh, the mobile hotspot versus the fixed wireless solution. I want to just make sure everything's kind of kind of crystal clear when it comes to that. Uh, but Husky Gamer, you did have kind of a follow up on where do you pay the bills for it? Um, simple question or simple answer, at least coming from me. Uh, it'll go through the provider. So whoever your cellular provider is, um, that's kind of where you'll be essentially kind of built based on the amount of data that you're using. Um, it will differ. And I think, Michael, you mentioned some are unlimited. I don't know if anything offers anything unlimited, um, but it really kind of does depend on that provider. Yeah, each ISP um, gets to decide what plans they want to make available. There are very few unlimited plans, and especially uh, ones that they allow hotspots um, to be on or fixed wireless to be on, um, because they sort of pick and choose saying, yeah, we'll give you an unlimited plan on a phone, but as soon as you want one of those for a um, hotspot, no, we don't offer unlimited plans. Mm -hmm. So just depends on the um, ISP, and you've got to look at the costs what their um, plan costs are. If you can get one where it had a data cap of say um, 500 gig a month, which I haven't even seen one like that, but if you could at a reasonable price, that would be a great data plan. Mm -hmm. But most of them uh, haven't gotten up to the 21st century and their data plans tend to be very, very small. I mean, they're talking 10 gig, 15 gig in a month, that sort of thing. And otherwise the price just shoots through the roof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. Um... The real answer coming from us, um, it will be to the provider. So suggest shopping around. Um, if you already have, let's say, like your mobile phone provider, sometimes you know they'll be able to kind of help um, either cut you guys a deal or compensate in some kind of way for sticking within one family versus mixing your providers and having one from your cellular device and having one for your um, for your router as a whole. So um, it takes a little bit more research, but um, you know, in any case happy to kind of help guide you through that process. And again, we do this every week. So uh, if you got updates by next week, we'll be able to kind of help you out by then as well. And one additional uh, recommendation is, um, since most likely you have very few um, cellular providers in your um, area, because most cellular providers, there's not a lot of overlap except when you're in big cities. Um, check and find out which um, Netgear fixed wireless or hotspots they have certified for their system because otherwise you could um, you know, get an activated SIM from them, pop it into a device, and the device doesn't work because their um, system is rejecting it because they say, oh, we don't recognize the IMEI on the um, device, so we're not gonna let you run on it. So it's always good to verify it's on their compatibility list or they at least say that it will work with their system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome, yeah, very good point. And I, the last kind of point here, the last suggestion I had, um, remind me, but, on our fixed wireless solutions, we have a SIM card that kind of comes prepackaged in there. <sighs> Who's that by again? By Clear? Is it Clearway? Is it Clearway? <laughs> uh, that I don't know about. Oh I man, have, I haven't seen the um, SIM card that comes with it. But normally, when you um, get a um, um, cellular package, you just ask them for um, you know the SIM card, and mm -hmm. um, it needs to be you know. Normally, it needs to be pre-activated in the hotspots, um, and you know that's where you're going to get it. They're going to not going to charge you more for the SIM card because you're buying their plan. Gotcha. Christine just said we got certified by Verizon. 
Yes, we just got Ooh. certified by Verizon. Um, if you happen to um, um, try to connect up or talk to Verizon, say you want to um, get hooked up with them and they say, oh no, you know, you're not on our list, push a little harder and ask for a supervisor because we did actually um, just get certified by them, but not everyone in the um, front line has gotten the information trickled down to them that we are certified with them. Gotcha, gotcha. Wow, yeah, so that's very recent news and that's something that uh, I'm not too sure if even we've kind of publicized that information as much. Um, but again, that's kind of one of the benefits here of coming back every single week is that sometimes we'll know things, we're allowed to talk about it, but they may have not necessarily made it its way to like a social post or like an yep. email yet. So either way, lots of options there. So <laughs> hopefully hopefully um, Husky Gamer um, not only helps you out, but any, anybody else who might be kind of running into a similar situation. And that's why we like doing these streams every week. So um, anything, any, any other kind of follow-up questions, please just let us know. Um, but uh, hopefully we were able to kind of help you and kind of steer you because uh, no one no one wants bad internet, no matter where you live. I'm sure that's the case, whether you're somewhere urban or somewhere rural, it shouldn't matter. All right, I, Kieran, I did see that you did have a question a little bit earlier here. Um, my Wax 218 does have an occasional random reboot, but I feel like it's the TP link injector and a genius one is in the post though. Might be my fault for keeping out. I'll keep you guys updated. Oh, more of kind of like an update. Um, hmm. well, yeah. The first thing I would say is TP Link Injector, really? You were cheaping <laughs> out. You can buy better ones than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wait, so how does that work within the WAX kind of 218? I Karen, I, I don't know if you want to provide like a lot more insight, but um, personally for me, I just like to kind of understand kind of everything that kind of like that I could catch wind of. So I'm not sure how that plays into, let's say, this access point, right? He's injecting power into the access point um, using the TP link. Oh, um, adapter. Like the power. Yep. And, oh my God, never mind. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> and as far as the random reboots, um, depending on how often the reboots actually happen, um, if they happen like once a week or so, and it automatically re reboots, brings itself back up, you may not um, think it's worth your time to dig in deeper and try to figure out what's causing it because it's limited and it's self-correcting. Mm -hmm. If it's happening more often than that, then you probably want to dig in a little bit more, possibly replace the TP-Link injector with something else um, that might be a little bit more robust. It might not be getting enough power at certain times, um, but it, it depends on how often it happens. I mean, honestly, if it doesn't happen that often and it fixes itself, it's easy just to forget about it. Mm -hmm. So there's, are there certain like advantages to using, because when I think of the injectors, that, that's just the power cord, right? It basically, yeah, it's basically okay. pushing power into it. So is there a benefit if you get one outside of what is proprietary, originally provided? Um, yeah, you can actually get more power injected um, into it. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, um, we were playing with something um, like that to be able to turn our um, murals into PoE devices. Oh, yes. And we were actually having to get power injectors that would plug into it that um, would replace the actual power cord. Mm -hmm. And um, it could be um, run just through um, the Ethernet cable, like other PoE devices. But the mural uses huge amounts of power compared to most PoE devices. Oh, yeah. So it was really hard to find anything that could inject enough power into it. Wow. So you need like a crazy like power budget in order to actually kind of consistently keep that on and running. Because um, I could imagine, theoretically, if we were able to make this work, like especially a lot of like corporate kind of situations where yep. Ethernet is wired everywhere. Imagine you could have like the craziest like corporate lobby of all time <laughs> if we could get all these murals hooked up through Ethernet, right? And, you know, um, power over Ethernet just is much easier to run. You don't have to worry about having a power socket close by that you're plugged into. You can have long runs on your Ethernet cables. They're very flexible, so they can go around things. Um, similar to our Pro-AV, that's what we do for our Pro-AV walls, mm -hmm. is we're actually, um, you know, running everything, all of that through um, Ethernet cables, all our video. But in this case, you're pushing power through as well. Wow. So you would think the video, the displays, and then the mirror displays, we're going to get there. 
We're gonna get Hopefully there. Hopefully so. Right? <laughs> to do we'll cross that bridge. To our murals as a pro EV wall. Awesome. Oh my god. All right. Well, uh, keep us tuned in. You know, I think that's something that's pretty exciting. That honestly, again, I don't know about, and I didn't know that um, that was even an idea out there. So. Um, <laughs> I'm just, okay, I only bring that up because I'm scarred from, like, mixing up power supplies. Because one time I had this, like, record player, it wasn't even a good record player, but I had a good, I had a record player that we had the power cable, I thought I had the power cable, looked at the voltage, used one from another, okay, it was a vacuum. But either way, used it, plugged in, the record player literally blew up, as in, like, it smoked out, like, it, it worked for a bit started crackling and then like the speakers blew out and then like smoke started coming out and i'm like i'm never gonna mess with any anything like that ever again there's there's just two things you always want to um, double check on is match the voltage and the amperage of your um, previous power supply to the new one if you can mm -hmm. match those two things then you're going to be um, okay but you can overdrive something by plugging in um, an adapter that's pushing too much power like what happened to you and then yeah <laughs> things are going to just start going boom <laughs> See, or that's why. Or if you're not pushing enough, but you're pushing just enough to get the thing to run, but not enough to run optimally, then you'll get it start doing weird things. Like your record player oh, really? might start to spin and then stop, and start to spin and stop. Uh -huh. So, yeah, you want to match up the um, power and voltage um, when you're doing that. And of course, with most devices now, you have to match up the um, adapter plug that's going in as well because the actual size of the adapter um, and diameter as well as the um, size of the hole in, in the side mm -hmm. changes. You can try mixing and matching some of our stuff and some of them will plug in, some of them will fit. I think I just had this epiphany as to why I think I'm better on software than I am on hardware. Because on software, that's traditionally things do not go boom. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get smoke from your software. Yeah, things that's what I'm saying. It's software, but it doesn't smoke. You get the blue screen. Yeah. Which is actually just as scary as we've been talking about, but hey, I'm I want to keep these hands, so that's all I'm saying. I don't know. I'm gonna be careful next time. All right, uh, hold on. Back to your question here. Uh, okay, can a WLL setup be attached to a Wi-Fi network? Hmm. I personally, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Do you guys know? Yeah, I'm looking that up right now because the acronym is not. Popping in my head. Oh boy. Um, yep, and I don't even see the acronym when I do a um, search on it. Well, my, let us know. WLL let stands for Working Load Limit, which wouldn't have anything to do with um, that, so I'm not quite sure. Wireless Local Loop? Is that a thing? Wireless Local Loop. Oh, wait. Come well, on, help us out here. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's the only thing I got. What is this? Uh, internet service, um, last mile. Let's mm -hmm. Yeah, wireless local loop. All right, so let me do a quick check on that. Wow. See, I'm telling you guys, this is why... We enjoy doing these shows because, well, at least especially for me, I learn a lot from you guys, Darren and Michael, but also everybody here who's in the chat. Um, <laughs> like, I think I just ask as many questions as you guys do, everybody here. So, um, you know, that's kind of why I like kind of drilling all this stuff down because if I can understand it, hopefully everybody else in the chat can. Oh, interesting. All right, yeah. What you got? Um, basically, um, with the wireless local loop, it's um, technology that means um, the person would be connected to the nearest um, exchange, which is basically the nearest connection to their um, ISP, mm -hmm. through radio link instead of um, copper wires. Oh, radio, so wireless right. frequencies. And I, I would say um, most likely not. Um, the closest thing that we have is our point-to-point um, -point, um, wireless um, devices, gotcha. but you're not going to be connecting the other end of that to your um, local um, internet provider because that's their equipment. Mm -hmm. um, but if you need to um, span a big distance on a piece of property, then um, yeah, definitely our point-to-point um, -point wireless. And I'm trying to remember the name of the point-to-point. -point. I should remember that. Uh, Average. Airbridge, there. Yes. Yeah, the Airbridge, that's um, what we have for um, point to point. And that can go up to, I think it's like 
um, 2.8 miles, something like that. Definitely mm -hmm. a very long distance um, in line of sight. Mm -hmm. But that's specifically for trying to connect, um, you know, one building to another building or to another site within um, range. I see. So trying to connect directly up to your um, internet provider's um, main um, hub, there, there's no way be there's no way you could actually link up to them. So I think yeah, I I, I kind of get what you're getting at. It's kind of like that last mile solution to kind of get um, essentially a network wirelessly broadcast it from one point to another point at that last mile. Um, now, if you're trying to do that from a friend's house that's a mile away, and you can see their house from your house, yeah, you could use the air bridge to actually do that. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, let me pull this up. Um, cause Ahmad, I think you may be interested in a link. Um, hopefully we could get one over to you real quick. Uh, but this is kind of where we're seeing this. The, uh, the wireless air bridge, oops, essentially point to point, kind of like the, uh, kind of like what we mentioned with wireless with WLL. But in any case, these are kind of like access points that need to essentially have that line of sight, but you could essentially beam information and data through an incredible amount of distance. In this case, about 9,000 square feet. Um, so we did do actually a couple live events on this. Uh, I do remember over the summer. But uh, a little similar in terms of the technology. I know WLL has probably been going on for probably a lot. I don't know, like probably longer. I mean, AirBridge is something we just kind of recently announced within the last year. But Conceptually, hopefully, we're kind of on the same page here in terms of the technology we're talking about here. Um, come on, let me actually, I'll throw a link over to you. And then go ahead. Oh, hey, Christine, we did it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. Um, but yeah, highly recommend you check that out. And that's kind of like um, probably the most kind of similar to this, what we have to offer now. All right. Jake Ryder, I see you in the chat here. What's up, man? Right. Um, Okay, so I think uh, <laughs> you sent over a shopping list. <laughs> either way, either way, I think the question is here, can we check out your setup and see if it's something to improve upon or to build? These are questions that I like because I can answer. <laughs> yeah, I like them a lot if he's talking about a gaming PC, if that's what he's talking about. I don't Ooh, know. Yeah, exactly. So, Jake, hopefully you're in here. We could kind of help you out. Like, we're all yep. pretty much... We all game here. We all we all tinker. We all we all got different projects going on. I always like to say one day we're gonna have like a little show and tell here, but by the way, um, Jake Ryder, let us know. And yeah, many if, of us have built our own PCs many a time. Yeah, yeah, Michael, you built the PC that I use at the office. Um, yep. <laughs> works wonders. It's crazy. Uh, Jake, if the link isn't working, it's probably something to do with like YouTube's algorithm kind of sniffing those links out. Maybe you could like copy and paste the contents if it's like a list of things like peripherals or uh, I don't know what you got, but either way, um, if it's just raw text, YouTube can't snip it out. Cool. So while we wait for those links, actually, should we do show and tell? Because we're we're talking about setups. What do you guys got working? Uh, ooh, okay, let's go first. Michael, what are you working on? What am I working on? Um, well, let's see. Trying to get these Cthulhu tentacles to print properly. Finally got those unprinted up on my printer, along with the tiny little evil acolytes that are going to be standing around it. I got four of these. Have to glue the arms on. <laughs> um, and what else? I think that's the only thing I've had a chance to do this week. It's been a busy week. Ah, wow. Hey, that's still good progress. Darren, what do you got? I've uh, been working on my golf game, mostly. Been Ooh. trying to get to the range and shoot some courses on the weekends. Oh, so you're actually going outside because I have not spent <laughs> any time outside this yeah, entire go week. Golf feels like a pretty safe thing to do, not around many people. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. Jake, I see I see your thing coming in here, but let me share one more thing. I got I to gotta walk over to my nice stand. One sec. Oh, okay. Ah, there we go with all of Jake's um, hardware. That he's there got. we go. Yep. All right. Mine's not networking, but this is kind of what I mean. I picked up this little little device here. It's Android powered, and 
uh, we were talking about it a little bit before the show, but it's my childhood in a box. So I'm putting together um, it's Android powered. I'm getting ROMs. I'm putting them on here. Um, the ROMs are kind of like the back end, like all the little games I used to play when I was a kid. It runs up to N64, Dreamcast, PlayStation 1, NES, SNES, Genesis, arcade games, whatever it is. Um, I'm getting those games in there, trying to kind of optimize it, tinker with it, make sure they run smoothly. And then I'm going to put the front end, so essentially I can make it look like, um, I don't know, like a Nintendo Switch if I wanted. I can make it look like a Wii dashboard. I can make it look like Netflix. Um, yeah, what I realized, I like tinkering with this kind of stuff. I used to jailbreak iPods when I was a kid, so. Yeah, when you were talking about this before the show, I didn't realize you bought handheld. I thought you bought a oh. board. That no. So, but yeah, I, I've been looking at those handhelds forever yeah. and, and been just waiting till they get a little bit better to run Dreamcast and 64 era stuff too. On yeah. Top of all the old stuff. The cool thing is that it moves really quickly. So literally I, I bought this and then they're like, oh, don't buy that. You should buy the next thing that just came out. And I'm like, <laughs> well, this thing took There's a month to ship thing. out. There's, There's always follow, the next thing. Yeah. I follow a couple YouTubers that review those things the instant they come out. So yeah, I've seen how they just keep coming and coming, getting mm -hmm. better and better. Yeah. It's crazy how, how quick it goes. So I, I would think that I would probably say in a few months, if, if they haven't figured out already, probably they could do like seamless like Dreamcast emulation. I think that's kind of like that last leg until they get up to like GameCube, PlayStation 2. Like that's yeah. like a lot harder. I don't really care about stuff past, like I don't care about this stuff past Dreamcast really, yeah. honestly, to emulate. There's just so much PS2, PS3 stuff that's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I have my the PS2 stuff. That's on my, that's, that's on my desktop. Um, but for something that I could like slip in a bag real quick and then literally like, it's like a dream of mine to literally play old N64 games I haven't played in like literally 20 years. Um, so it's cool. And I see Jake, you got a, you got a couple Raspberry Pis and yes, to the FBI guy. This is, um, we're kidding. <laughs> all right. All right. Anyway, Jake, let's talk about you. Uh, <laughs> you got your setup. He's got a gaming PC, PS4, Xbox One. Okay. Uh, four laptops, two servers, and NAS, and, okay, so those are the systems he's got going. Yep. Uh, EX80, he's got the extender, what he got is the router. Yep, and he's got the wow. RX200. RX200, you got the switch. The 16 port um, gigabit um, switch, um, ready NAS, 2144 bay. Uh, yep, so you've got a nice setup there. That's I assume incredible. I'm assuming that you do have your ready NAS in um, RAID 5 configuration, and you're not trying to squeeze out as much um, space as possible because you definitely want it in RAID 5, but I'm sure that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And wow. um, yeah, you've got a good system there. I don't see a lot that um, you really need to replace in there. Yeah, honestly, I have the RX200 as well. Beautiful, it just like, it's like a beast, and especially for me to kind of like even go from a four bedroom place to now I'm in a two bedroom apartment, um, works exactly as like I need it to be. Um, unfortunately, like I'm more of a tinker when it comes to like my gaming systems. I'm less of a tinkerer because I don't really play as many multiplayer games. So, um, you know, I, I'm more of that set it and forget it kind of type, but that's why I do enjoy the RX 200 is that it's so powerful. I never have like, I never even have to worry about like even wiring things up. Even if I'm not getting like the full, full speeds, I like having the convenience of being wireless. But yeah, like what Michael mentioned, I mean, Darren, unless you got anything, I think you got a pretty incredible setup. Uh, even you're all Wi-Fi 6, EX80, I mean, maybe look towards 16 when it comes out, but besides that, that's still early, you know? Yeah, yeah and um, the only other thing you could do is if you wanted to replace your 16 port um, unmanaged switch with a, a managed switch, you can still get them that are um, fanless and then you can actually monitor that from your um, PC um, just to make sure if anything happens to go wrong, it's an easy way to check things out instead of having to go over to the switch. Mm. But that's just for fun. The, yeah, the 16 port um, unmanaged switches are great. I think I have one of them plugged into the many, many switches that I have in the um, house here. And I've got some four port um, Netgear switches, some eight port Netgear switches, some smart switches. And um, yeah, you're doing good. Yeah, no. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. Um, but hey, you know, I think in any case, like, 
if for whatever reason you have everything here set up and you are running into, I don't know, something slows down, something drops out, that's where we'd love to hear from you. But otherwise, dang, that's like a, that's a flex. Because <laughs> like, not a lot of folks have that. I did see, yeah. Um, it looked like it wasn't a four-bay disless um, that Jake had. He has a, um, a ready NAS duo, so it's only gotcha. a two-bay. And um, yeah, that definitely you could um, upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, because right now, um, if you have it in mirrored configuration, which you do, you basically, you're getting 50% of the overall space. If you have two one terabyte drives in there, you're getting, you know, theoretically one terabyte of free space. Mm -hmm. You're actually getting less than that because they got to put the OS on there. And when you format things, you always get less space, but just as a theoretical thing, you have one terabyte. Gotcha. If you go to a um, four bay and you put four one terabytes in there, instead of losing half of your space, you're only losing a quarter of it. So that means you have three terabytes available out of the four instead of 50% one terabyte out of two. Um, and it overall, it just, um, it'll be faster than your mirrored um, setup. And you could also um, expand it a lot easier than um, expanding um, the two bay. So I would recommend getting a four bay on ready NAS. You will have to manually copy stuff over. You can't just pull your drives out, pop them into the um, four bay because the um, firmware files that are on each of the models is specific to that model. So that when you try to carry it over, it's not gonna recognize um, those as being from the new four bay. Mm -hmm. So you will basically have to get some new drives, pop in the four bay, connect your cable to your network, tell it to do a copy job and just copy everything over to the um, new NAS when you're done. Then you can unplug that um, two bay and you can even set that aside as a backup just in case something ever happened. Yeah, a backup to the backup. Yep. <laughs> That's why I have three ready NASs up on my shelf up here. Oh, you know, you no. gotta have a backup to your backup. Wow. Wow, that's 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 really good advice, man. That's crazy. Um, hey, so just to kind of drill it down, I I want to kind of clarify here. J does Jake? Do you have the duo, or do you yes, have the two fourteen? Because I, I saw two four the RN two fourteen yeah. four bay a little bit above, or is that yeah, what he's looking he, to upgrade to? I think it's what he's looking to upgrade to. Yeah, yeah, because he said yeah, his current ready NAS is the ready NAS duo. Gotcha. Yep. Um, yeah. Oh, and also the four bay has a lot more processing power than that duo does. Yeah. Wow. Not only, as you mentioned that that duo is from 2008, but <laughs> the four bay, more memory, more processing power. Of so, course, it depends on what your pocketbook is. If it's unlimited, there's a nice little eight bay that we have out there that just kicks butt and has a 10 gigs connection on it. Oh my God. Wow. So a lot of options for, for the NAS storage. And um, that's something that I might, so Michael, I'm really looking forward to setting that up now, now that we've been talking about it. Um, and yeah, I think you could very easily expand the storage, expand the processing power, make your, make your backups just as a whole more safe, get more capacity, and hopefully a little bit of a speed boost at the same time. Um, yeah. Honestly, if, if, you, if you got the budget for it, Jake, I'll say go for it. Because honestly, if you do, you'll be uh, you'll be stunning on, especially especially on me. <laughs> like I can't even I can't even touch like um, what you got going on. So yeah. I'm really and also stuff. also when you have more than um, two drives in there, um, with the um, ready NAS, it will automatically expand your volume without you having to copy stuff over inside. Mm -hmm. So if you only put two drives in the four bay um, ready NAS, it'll automatically go into RAID one and do the mirroring. But when you toss a third drive in there, it'll reconfigure itself to RAID 5 without you doing anything. Uh -huh. And then you can toss in a fourth drive, and it'll just add it to the volume um, that you already have. So there's expandability as well. So you mentioned, sorry, uh, Jake just threw in the 8-bay 10-gig. Is that the one that you just mentioned? Yes. OK. There's, well, yeah, there's, that? we do have an 8-bay 10-gig. Um, which model is that? Yeah, I'm trying I, to it it is on my shelf. but. I can't tell the model by looking at it. Hold on. Is it <clears throat> the RN sixty six <laughs> RN six two eight? It should be. Um, let me check that out. All right. Um, there it is. RN five two eight. Five two eight. That's All the right, eight bay that. with a ten gig um, port on it. RN five two eight. Okay. 
So we'll float this one up real quick. I know, I know, uh, you guys were looking for some links here, but I just want to kind of show everybody what we're talking about. It's easy to talk about it, but it's hard to actually imagine what we are really talking about. Um, this is a NAS storage. Essentially, you hook up uh, this. It's essentially, a cloud in your house. Uh, you can hook it up to your router, and then you can wirelessly um, essentially access uh, your storage from essentially any device that can connect to it. Um, so you can use it to store files, back up your computer, aka exactly what I need to do, um, and a lot, a lot, a lot of different uses for it. But and if you happen to get um, something like a ready NAS that has a 10 gig port on it. Then what you do is you get our um, SX10 Pro Gaming Switch that has two 10 gig ports on it. Drop a 10 gig card into your PC, and then you can have a 10 gig, 10 gig connection directly from your PC uh -huh. right over to your ready nows to back stuff up, which is what I have. So that's why I'm bringing it up. And that would be insane. And last thing here, I know we're starting to run out of time here. Uh, we usually do kind of like a rapid fire at the end. This is the 10G Switch. There's me. <laughs> Old picture. OK. Um, yeah, essentially, if you can hook up 10G to the ReadyNAS, you got blazing fast uh, oh, yeah. wireless. So um, again, 10G is kind of incredible. It's still something that's relatively a lot, like still expensive out there. So if you can get your hands on one of these, yep. you'll, be, you'll be good. But it is starting to, you know, come down in price, and more things are starting to get at least multi-gig um, ports on them, even if they aren't 10 gig. Oh, awesome. Well, then stay tuned. <laughs> As we always say, there's always the next big thing. So that's why we always encourage everybody. Um, do a little bit more research, kind of, uh, you know, if you got these kind of situations, I think we very quickly learn we love answering these kinds of uh, these kinds of questions. So, um, hey, we'll help guide, kind of guide you so you can get that ultimate setup. Um, in any case, we are getting down to the last few minutes. And as a reminder, thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you, Kev. Uh, if you like the show, give it a thumbs up. If you like the show, give us, please, uh, a subscribe and then hit that bell. That's going to tell YouTube's algorithm that you guys are enjoying the show. It's going to float up on more people's feeds. And if we could keep the show going or keep you, the chat active and you guys find this valuable, we got, we could keep on doing the show week by week. Um, so again, it's all because of you guys that we're, we're here for over a year. So we always appreciate it. All right. We're going to have to answer a couple questions, like literally within a minute each. Um, so hope you guys are ready. Um, so, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm 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 cutting through I'm cutting through uh, everything that Jake just mentioned. Okay, Hamad, to convert a DECT phone to a VoIP digital phone attachment to a Wi-Fi network, is there a converter for that? <laughs> oh my god! I have I have not seen any converters converting DEC to um, VoIP. I don't even and know I if I know what that is. I did a quick is. Google search and I couldn't um, find any third-party hardware that was doing it. You might be able to find some company um, that. It does make something like that, but I've never seen it. Wow. Yeah, and that's like two layers of converting signals. So I'm really curious if that's <laughs> if that's something that's uh, super feasible. Um, but hey, you know, again, Hamad, I know you've been here for a while. Like, even if we can't answer your question, I know you always got questions for us. So please keep it coming. And if there's anything that we could maybe clarify or dig a little bit more research into, we will. Um, but actually. That was one of the last ones that I saw. Um, oh, Warrior One, I do believe that you you did have an issue, and I think that um, I think Christine is going to be getting in touch with you to uh, to help you resolve that. Um, so in that case, we got a minute left. Is there anything else that? Well, I see you may have missed? asked. What about forty gigabit? Ooh, <laughs> what for, yeah, for Ethernet? <laughs> what about a <laughs> hundred? Hey, we do have um, business class switches that are doing a hundred. So Jesus. you know. But then, what end um, device do you have that's also doing 100 um, gigabit? I don't know, SpaceX launching rockets or something? <laughs> no, th those blow up on the launch pad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if they had a, they had a what? A, <laughs> go 10 times that amount then. And then maybe maybe they'll, uh, maybe they'll be able to get us on Mars. Hey, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing with this kind of technology. You never know. Uh, what those end uses will end up being. That's the exciting thing about it all. Vanessa, you are here in the last minute. <laughs> oh, man. All right. The Pixel Switcher just asked, which Nighthawk routers have the geofiltering? Yeah. Those would be the XR series that we yeah. have. The XR 300, 450, 500, 700,000. Yep. Let me, let me put that up real quick here. So uh, go ahead and check this out, and I will also throw the link in here. Ooh, what are we running? Look at this. 
uh, something about Rainbow Six. If you get uh, an extra 500, you get, wow, you get Rainbow Six for free. That's cool. Um, yes, anything on the Night Harper Gaming line, uh, extra 500, ooh, where'd it go? Extra 500, extra 1,000, um, and then we, we, if you can find it in stock, extra 700, extra 300, um, those are all routers that support, um, GeoFilter. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, man. Okay. Vanessa says, I'm late, but I got to say hello. And, you know, hello. We really appreciate, Vanessa, I know you're probably one of our biggest fans here, so I just wanted to shout you out. But in any case, uh, we are out of time here for questions. So if there's any question, uh, for whatever reason, we could not get to today, please join again for next week. Uh, we do these shows every Friday, 12 o'clock to 1 p.m. Pacific time. Um, same YouTube channel, and you guys should see the link coming up uh, early next week at the, uh, the latest. So um, please, if you guys liked it, uh, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and hopefully we'll see you guys. Uh, next week. See you guys soon. Thanks, Rookie, for that tip, by the way. Awesome. All right, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. See Bye. you later, everyone.